All right, everyone. This is going to be a little different than our normal videos. Um, we're going to talk about pipes and pipe tobacco today. Now, I promise if you stick with me, you'll understand why this is a prepper's topic. Uh, it's also obviously a topic dear to my heart. But I promise, even if you're not a pipe smoker, you will understand at the end of this why this is a prepper's topic. So, let's get right into it. First, I want to talk about the various styles of pipes, okay? And pipes are typically classified both by their shape and the material of which they're constructed. So, as you can see right here, we have a fully straight pipe. Now, this straight pipe has a very straight stem, all right? Now, they can also be classified by the shape of their bowl, but I'm really not going to get into that today. I just, this is a general overview. Um, this is another straight pipe. This is a bent pipe. Now there's various grades of bent. As you can see, this is probably a quarter bent, whereas this is probably a half bent. Um, something with a lot more bend in it, you know, that comes up like that, would be a full bend. So the other uh, styles that we have here, I have a church warden pipe. This is the, you know, the Gandalf pipe. And I have a tavern pipe, this long clay pipe here. Um, would be hung, there'd be a rack of these in an old tavern. You could pull one off, break a bit off the end so you have any mouthpiece, and there you go. Now just for giggles, we've got another type here that is unique. And this is my vest pipe. Move it over so you can see it better. The vest pipe was just that. It was designed to go into a vest. It could be, uh, you just twist the, the stem around here. And when you're done, you twist it back, and it goes right in your vest pocket. That's hard to do one-handed. So those are the shapes of pipes. There are others, but those are the primary shapes that you're liable to run into. Now materials. We have a number of materials here. Um, the first one, and the most common, is briar. This comes from a Mediterranean briar bush. It's actually a node off of the root of that briar. And the reason they use that, as you can see from this close-up, there's a lot of figure in that wood. Not only is it pretty, but for its size and weight, it makes it very dense, thus resistant to burning. Now, in addition, you can also make a pipe out of any number of woods. Um, this is, I believe, hickory. This was given to me by a good friend. It smokes just as well. It just won't last quite as long. Likewise, a corn cob isn't going to last nearly as long. And one of my favorites is the clay pipe. These are a little more delicate, but they smoke very well, and they're extremely light. And finally, here we have a traditional meerschaum. Meerschaum is a calcified type of coral, and it's very easy and soft to carve, so thus makes a very good pipe. And these are typically very elaborately carved, as you can see. They also age well. They take on a nice dark patina, um, if you can see it in the inside of that bowl. The, with much smoking and handling, the whole outside will take on that nice brown color, really good amber patina. Um, this has got an ash guard. It's good if you're in a windy place. This is a one that I like to take when I'm fly fishing out on the river or whatever. Um, helps keep the wind from coming in and blowing up your ashes. All right, so those are your basic styles of pipes. Uh, and those are the basic materials that you're gonna run into. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, the tobacco itself. Pipe tobacco is not the same as cigarette tobacco or cigar tobacco. It is treated differently and there are a number of key differences here. So you don't want to just crush up a cigarette and stick it in your pipe. You don't even really want to crush up a cigar if you have a broken cigar and put it in your pipe. You can. I've done it. Don't recommend it. So the first thing we're going to look at are the fact that these tobaccos are all going to be blends. They're not going to be a pure tobacco. They're not going to be all of one type. 
blenders will get various quantities of uh, different types of pipe tobacco and blend them themselves in their secret recipes. And some of them are quite good. And some of them, you just can't tell the difference. So, but as you learn to develop a taste for the tobacco, you can tell kind of the proportions of what's in it. You can tell it has a strong Latakia or a strong Perque or uh, a Cavendish. You can tell just by the aroma. Um, so what are the basic types here? Um, the first we're going to look at, this is a pretty typical Virginia. You can see it's got a lot of light tan color to it. There's not much dark there. These are typically cured in a flu. Um, very mild tobacco. A lot of tobaccos will use this as a base. Um, makes a good smoke. Uh, and a very mild, easy starting tobacco. Good for, uh, good for beginners. The other uh, more common one is the Burley or the English blend, um, which is what I prefer. It's got a much stronger flavor. Um, this is one from a pipe shop in Monterey and you can see it's much darker. It's got a lot of black in it. That's the, uh, the Cavendish and it's got a lot of dark brown, which is the Burley uh, tobaccos. Very, uh, a very strong tobacco. And then you've got what's called a Cavendish. Now Cavendish is typically thought of as um, a cased tobacco. Cased meaning it's had a flavor imparted to it. Uh, like this Captain Black Cherry. Uh, the Captain Black Cherry does have a cherry flavor imparted to it with a casing. If you like the flavors, go for it. It's an easy way to learn, um, but you're gonna, it, the flavoring by its very nature, masks some of the flavor of the tobacco. Now, in these blends, there are much smaller percentages of spice tobaccos, Orientals, Latakias, Perques, and others. Um, not really that important. Just understand that if you're a beginner, start with a Cavendish, cased or uncased, or a Virginia, and move on from there. Move on from there to your Englishes and your heavier, darker tobaccos. Now, in addition to what it made of, um, we have some differences here in the cut, the fineness of the tobacco. Now, you can see this is this is kind of twiggy. Um, this has been chopped into very fine squares. Um, this one, yeah, you can tell, is kind of somewhere in between the two. Um, this Peterson Sherlock Holmes was once very dense. It was a cake, and I have rubbed it so that it has come out into flakes. Um, you can also get it you get it in um, different cuts. It'll come in wafers or blocks. The whole idea for all of those, though, is you take and you take a break off a piece of it. You put it in your palm and you rub it until you get these flakes, like we see here. And that's what you're going to put in your pipe bowl and smoke. Speaking of which, let's do that. <laughs> 